As the years pass, fewer and fewer people remember that this nondescript building on the edge of Whitville was once a railroad station. The railroad played a vital role in the history of southwest Virginia, and every major town through the New River Valley once relied on regular freight and passenger service. Like any other town, Whitville's depot played a significant role in shaping the community around it. In the early 1850s, the newly incorporated Virginia and Tennessee Railroad began expanding westward from Lynchburg. Blasting through mountainous terrain and laying rails with primitive hand tools was tedious. Most of this slow, back-breaking work was done by enslaved people rented by the railroad from slave owners. The necessity for bridges and tunnels drove construction costs as high as $3 million per mile in today's value making this one of the most expensive railroad lines in the country. The tracks finally reached Withville on December 14, 1854. A grand celebration was held to welcome the first train to arrive in Withville four days later, pulled by a little locomotive called Reindeer. Two years later, in 1856, a humble depot designed to handle both passenger and freight traffic was built on Railroad Avenue, where the tracks passed closest to town. The arrival of the railroad was an instant shot of adrenaline to Southwest Virginia's sleepy economy. A journey across the Commonwealth that once took days or weeks could now be achieved in a matter of hours. The population began to grow. Lead and salt mines were able to transport raw materials to industrial centers. Farmers were able to transport larger quantities of produce and livestock to a broader market more quickly than ever before. Stock drives from as far away as Taswell became common sights on the road to the depot in Withville. Tobacco production in southwest Virginia alone consequently increased more than 2,000% between 1850 and 1860. The railroad in return also brought manufactured goods from industrial centers in the north and the east. Telegraph lines were erected beside the track by the Lynchburg and Abingdon Telegraph Company. They made depots in once isolated communities like Withville epicenters of swift communication with the world beyond the mountains. Political alignments too were shifted by the arrival of the Iron Horse. The cultural divide between the wealthier and more populous Eastern Virginia and the more sparsely populated counties in Western Virginia had been growing for years, fueling a growing movement for secession. One newspaper speculated that the railroad would connect those in western Virginia with the rest of the state, and in all time to come they will be neighbors, be one people, having a common hope, a common interest, a common destiny. The economic benefits the railroad brought to southwest Virginia did manage to mitigate the Commonwealth's growing geopolitical rift for a while. The optimism of newspaper reporters, much like today, would prove somewhat less than prophetic. The Confederacy, and especially Virginia, relied heavily upon its railroad network during the Civil War to move troops and materiel quickly. Valuable commodities like food, raw materials, and troops all flowed through Withville like clockwork during the early years of the war. The vital importance of this railroad line to the Confederate war machine did not go unnoticed by the Union Army, who were determined to disable it. General George Stoneman's men marched into Withville on December 16, 1864, and set the town ablaze. The depot went up in flames. Stoneman's men ripped up the rails and twisted them around trees to render them useless. Years of raids and deferred maintenance wrought havoc on the Virginia and Tennessee Railroad. Most of its buildings, and a great deal of its trackage, had been all but destroyed by the end of the war, and more than half of its locomotives and rolling stock were out of commission. Soon after the war's end, rail traffic in southwest Virginia was back up and running by July 1865, although work on rebuilding the depot in Withville would not begin until the summer of 1872. The railroad, which was now the Atlantic, Mississippi, and Ohio, was rebuilding depots on the Bristol branch in the Italianate style, with broad eaves and characteristic towers. Instead of a frame building sheathed in wood, the town fathers in Withville wanted a more stately depot constructed of brick. 
The railroad ultimately agreed to order a brick depot, although in the construction contract they stipulated that they would only contribute $6,000 toward its construction. When the final bill overran that figure by more than $1,000, the railroad held firm and refused to pay the difference. One of Whitfield's founding fathers, Colonel Thomas Boyd, provided the contractors with cash and two parcels of land to settle the bill. The new depot opened to the public on December 10, 1873. Photographs and insurance maps indicate that the building, with its distinctive tower, appeared similar to the Cambria Freight Station in Christiansburg. A ticket office divided two waiting rooms by gender. The interior was decorated with pine floors and walnut wainscoting, brick fireplaces, lavatories with marble washstands, and an elaborate ticket counter with walnut brackets. In the years after the Civil War, the railroad supported a seasonal tourism industry in Withville and other towns throughout the New River Valley. People from the Deep South and the coastal lowlands seeking reprieve from the oppressive heat would spend weeks and months at a time in Withville. Humble boarding houses, some of which still stand today, like the Fleming Rich House, to elegant hotels like the Fourth Avenue or the Crockett, entertained those who came for the cool, moderate climate as much as the mineral waters which flowed forth from natural springs throughout Wythe County. Despite their relative comfort, passenger trains in southwest Virginia would not offer dining cars until at least 1904. In the days before then, passenger trains would make an extended stop in Withville for 45 minutes to allow passengers to debark and take meals in the dining room of the reasonably extravagant Boyd Hotel, which stood directly opposite the depot. Comparably elegant, although situated more than a dozen blocks away on Main Street, the 4th Avenue provided a horse-drawn omnibus to convey its guests to and from the depot. Seven trains a day were calling in Withville during the off-season, and nearly twice as many during the summer season. Several of these were mail trains contracted by the federal government to carry U.S. mail. As the fastest and most reliable means of transportation in the late 19th century, trains were ideal for moving the country's mail. Railroads designed rolling post offices dedicated especially for the purpose of sorting and processing mail on the move. When the mail train passed through town, incoming and outgoing mail was exchanged, sometimes without stopping. On one summer morning in 1885, 12-year-old Edith Bowling left Withville for the first time to venture to Charlottesville with her father. Edith would one day become First Lady of the United States after her marriage to President Woodrow Wilson in 1915 and spent much of her time in the White House traveling and representing the office of the President both at home and abroad. Despite her travels to the four corners of the earth, Edith's first journey into the world from the little depot in Whitville always stood out in her memory. The train took most of the day then to get to Charlottesville. Only a generation earlier, it would have taken a wagon most of the week to make the journey along muddy, rutted roads. Thanks to the railroad, the movement of people had become more expedient, comfortable, and accessible than ever before. By the turn of the century, Withville's little depot had become too small to adequately handle the ever-increasing demands of passenger and freight traffic. Norfolk and Western decided to expand and renovate the building in 1905. The freight shed on the west end was left relatively untouched, but on the east end, the depot's ornate Italianate tower was removed to make way for an expanded ticket office and passenger facilities. Two bays, one on each side of the building, were added. New lavatories occupied the street side bay, while the track side bay, which no longer exists, allowed the station agent a view of trains coming from east or west. Three large coal stoves were installed to heat the new passenger accommodation and ticket office. Most of the depot's best-known images date from around the time that the addition was completed, when its distinctive slate-roofed, bracketed canopy was added around the new east end. The depot was once again expanded in 1916. Virginia's Jim Crow laws required Norfolk and Western segregate their passenger facilities by race. 
To accommodate this, the old baggage room was converted into a waiting room for people of color. An additional bay was constructed on the west end of the depot to compensate for the subsequent loss of space in the freight room. The mismatched hue of the masonry work on the west end of the building still bears evidence of this subtle change from the Jim Crow age. An iron umbrella shed was also added during the 1916 refit and is visible in a number of period images. Business boomed around the depot throughout the 1920s and 30s. During those years, the platform was lengthened to accommodate longer trains. Stock pens, farm suppliers, produce wholesalers, lumber yards, and suppliers of coal, ice, and textiles were all operating in Withville. All of these businesses relied on the railroad, at least in part for their survival. In fact, Norfolk and Western was so vital to the regional economy that it continued to pay dividends even throughout the Great Depression. When the United States finally entered the Second World War, the nation's railroad companies voluntarily agreed to cooperate with one another to support the pressing needs of a nation at war. Like railroads everywhere, Virginia's rail network was mobilized and was as vital as it had been during the Civil War some 80 years earlier. Trains moved tons of materiel and thousands of troops through the New River Valley for embarkation on troop ships in Norfolk. Freight tonnage on the network nearly doubled, and in 1943 alone, Norfolk and Western generated $84 million in today's currency from civilians and military personnel across its network, five times the amount of revenue-paying passenger traffic just a few years earlier, in 1939. Small-town depots like Withville's were where numerous fathers and sons left for war, and they were also the site of reunions when the railroad brought them home. In 1949, Norfolk and Western refurbished Withville's aging depot. The bracketed canopy around the ticket office and waiting rooms was removed, the facade of which was also refaced and fitted with new aluminum windows. Inside, the agent's office and passenger accommodations were completely remodeled. The concrete umbrella shed over the platform replaced the earlier wrought iron umbrella shed. From the east end, both inside and out, the depot had practically come to resemble an entirely new and modern building. Despite this investment, however, it soon became clear that the golden age of the railroad was quickly waning. Passenger traffic on railroads across the United States began to fall sharply during the 1950s as the age of the automobile entered its zenith. The improvement of America's roads, including the gradual expansion of the interstate highway system, made travel by automobile or bus cheaper and faster than travel by train had ever been. The trains calling in Withville consequently started becoming emptier and less frequent. The 1950s were also the dying days of steam power on the railroad. Steam endured on Norfolk and Western's network much longer than other railroads, due largely to easy access to coal from the coal fields of West Virginia the shipment of which was a primary source of revenue for Norfolk and Western. But by the end of the 1950s, even Norfolk and Western could no longer resist the age of dieselization and its promise of increased efficiency. Renowned photographer O. Winston Link immortalized the dying age of steam in southwest Virginia. His work included a handful of images captured around Wythe County, including a photo series of one of Norfolk and Western's distinctive J-class locomotives pulling into Withville with a full rake of passenger coaches. On Christmas Eve, 1957, O. Winston Link photographed the arrival of the westbound Birmingham Special arriving in nearby rural retreat. That same night, he also made a sound recording of the eastbound Pelican arriving in rural retreat on its way to Washington, D.C. The two media are often portrayed together in a romantic depiction of the last days of steam-powered railroads in the United States.
Photographs in Link's collection taken at Withville's depot a couple of weeks later suggest that a similar sound recording may also have been made in Withville, although it is not clear if any such recording survives anywhere in Link's extensive work. Passenger traffic had never been a significant source of profit for Norfolk and Western. Even during its busiest years, passenger trains never contributed any more than 3% to the company's total profit. As ticket sales continued to fall through the 1960s, passenger service stopped padding the bottom line altogether. By 1971, passenger service in southwest Virginia had been cut down to just one train a day, whose capacity was still surplus to requirements, and whose operation had become a financial loss. Norfolk and Western could no longer justify operating passenger service on the Bristol branch, and Amtrak, who was set to assume control of the company's other passenger services on May 1st of that year, also agreed that the line was simply no longer profitable. Southwest Virginia's last regularly scheduled passenger train ran on April 30th, 1971, and with it, service between Lynchburg and Bristol finally drew to a close. With reliable and expedient rail connections drying up, so too ended the Postal Service's contract with the railroad, who by this time found it more efficient to move mail by road and air. A freight agent continued to operate out of the old depot in Withville until a teenager broke into the building and started a fire in 1975. After 102 years of continuous service, lasting from the aftershock of the Civil War and well into the Space Age, the world had changed and a railroad depot in Withville was deemed no longer necessary. Norfolk and Western removed most of the building's contents after the end of passenger service and demolished the platform and concrete umbrella shed. Farmers Milling purchased the old depot after its closure and continues to use the building to support its business operations. Further alterations were necessary in order to make the building suitable for use by Farmers Milling, although traces of the depot's former life remain. A few original roof frames from the 1870s and the brick walls of the old freight room still bear soot from the 1975 fire. The 1940s tile work in the old passenger waiting room still remains too, and despite its age, still stands up to wear and tear by forklifts. A myriad of pipes and gauges from the old coal furnace, removed long ago, sit quiet and cold in the cellar. Farmers Milling long relied on Norfolk Southern for bulk shipment of merchandise. However, the old freight siding has grown silent in recent years, since shipments by truck now prove more reliable and cost-effective. In 2017, Amtrak restored passenger service to Roanoke, which quickly proved so popular that it became the only profitable Amtrak line in Virginia. Bending to increasing demands for transit alternatives to an increasingly crowded Interstate 81, Amtrak has already committed to extending passenger service to Christiansburg no later than 2026. The Commonwealth, too, is eyeing the feasibility of extending Amtrak service across the state to Bristol, which would consequently restore passenger service to Withville. There may soon come a day when a regular train once again calls here on the south end of Withville, and bring with it the many benefits and conveniences of a passenger rail connection. The railroad brought the progress of the modern industrialized world to southwest Virginia. Trains facilitated population growth and supported the local economy, moving people, news, and goods with unmatched ease and efficiency. As Withville's gateway to the world beyond Appalachia, the depot played a crucial role in shaping the lives of people around Wythe County. And even today, the old depot still plays a role in supporting the local agricultural industry that it helped establish here more than a century ago.